Okay, working. Great. Um, I actually have a bit of a problem with my audio and I wasn't able to actually um, fix it. So sorry about that. I hope this is, isn't too bad to actually listening. And what else? Um, okay, so hi everyone. This is M again from um, Tropical Plants fin Finland and I'm now uh, currently I'm the one who is most of the time actually doing these uh, videos or posting or Instagram which we have I think I linked it to our page channel uh, page uh, but the thing is Jay is a bit uh, busy with her uh, final year and she's uh, trying to get to I think it's um, college in uh, US term we call it upper secondary school in in Finland so um, she's trying to uh, she's trying to get good grades I think it's called a levels in some uh, countries uh, so that she's able to actually get into a good college or upper secondary school as we uh, say it so um, if you are Swedish speaking it's gymnasium so anyway, um, that's why she's way too busy to actually try to up, uh, update our, her what's happening and it's always really dark w when she's coming home and doing all her homework. So there with us, I'm trying to hold on to this, um, our schedule and I hope that next summer or during the Christmas time, Jay is also able to post something or maybe do a video. but. Uh, this this is our reason. So hopefully, uh, we are getting something about the succulents and cacti at some point because I'm not that expert on them. But anyway, not expert in these either. Uh, but I have had some some orchids for some years now. So back to the today's topic. What sort of things you want to um basically you don't want to come up with when you are buying orchids uh this one which you actually can see the name here on cd with sweet sugar it's not i didn't buy this one i got it as a freebie and because i've been a bit busy with my work and everything else uh, the past few weeks so um I was too too lazy to actually do anything about it. I knew I was a, was like on borrowed time, and as you can see, this is the blooms, which are amazing. I really love them, but because I haven't done anything about this, and um, it does have snails, it has been uh, quarantined in other place. So as you can see, chada. No blooms. <laughs> I mean, no roots. Sorry, my son just came in. So uh, the roots gone. I really need to report this now. And then let me get this somewhere safe because I just it's only holding on with that uh, um, support which it had there. So. This is the next one. This is uh, this I bought from from Karge again. I'm sorry, I'm just saying it, pronouncing it as Finnish people would. You you just have to deal with it. So Dendrobium spectabile and Macrophyllum, and it's um, it was interesting cross, and I wanted to see how it would would fare here and so i there was some problems already with it i had to cut do emergency cutting on hold on there which are is some sort of oh just hold on a sec my son is talking i'm back so anyway uh we were talking about that uh, if it can focus anyway there where's my finger and my lovely fingernails which 
full of uh, dirt. So uh, there were some pseudopods. I think I cut off like two. So I know I need to actually really take a look at in, inside of that media because it's really deep and disgusting. So basically, I'm not sure how this is going to end up with, but it's like I'm getting into dendrobiums now. And I think that's this, uh, not the, the uh, type which actually needs any sort of like um, uh, resting period. I guess that's the correct term. And then I have my twinkle, which is trying to bloom. And I'm not able to actually show you the blooms now because it's like shaking and it's actually... It's, uh, hold on a sec. Okay, sorry about that again, but that's life. I I got a family, so mm. not sure if you actually can see it. But I can. I I really need to take a look. Maybe I should just hold this so that I I won't drop it. But anyway, I need to take a look what's inside of this pot. pot. And I might have to actually report it because it's not looking that good. I don't know what's wrong with the media or anything. I just uh, drenched it with the um, seaweed extract so that it, it has this like uh, nutrition inside for, for me to actually do the reporting for it so that it's, it could actually uh, bounce back faster. But yeah, I really like its blooms but it's not going to focus on this okay no sorry um anyway um wait yeah it's it's just the backlighting is it's wrong i'm still like uh trying to work with the lighting but yeah, I'm going to uh, cut off these blooms because it's not, there's something wrong with it. So best thing to do with this sort of plants is to cut off the blooms and let it actually use its, its energy to revive itself and grow new roots and stuff. But the problem is I'm hoping that the twinkle is actually going to branch out. Because I, I cannot see new bulbs starting. But uh, let me get back to you. I'll uh, continue with this one. I'll just pause pause here so that I'm, I'm actually doing something at, at the same time when I'm explaining. So let's see. Okay, here are all my uh, things which I'm going to use. So I have the cotton. And some yeah what is it it's a uh, disinfecting and i'm actually using this one i think it was um isopropa yes it's isopropanol so uh i use that for the orchids and all the stuff which i'm disinfecting uh, between um uh between the changing from one plant to another it might look like I'm not uh, leaving that much time between to actually the uh, disinfect uh, the stuff to evaporate, which is actually the one which is killing all the bacteria and all stuff. But yeah, I'll usually let it like uh, sit for a while. But anyway, I'll uh, disinfect my, my scissors just in case because I'm not sure did I do it. I'm... I usually don't remember, so I just do it anyway, again, <laughs> that way it's easier for me. Okay, right then, uh, we can start with the, sh the sweet sugar. I need to see that I actually... I'm in the frame and all, I might have to actually... I, I'm not, I don't have a viewer, I'm actually watching it from behind this camera. Maybe because I'm using my laptop, which is new one, and that's actually the reason why I don't have anything to um, fix the audio system. I don't have a mic. I think I need some sort of like um, different pl plug that I usually uh, with all my 
gears which I have now they aren't look who's there so this is the culprit I'm sorry it's not like focusing on this little tiny thing but that's a snail which has had its time and it's actually now decided oh I need to move not so fast you're going to so regret for coming into this house so that's the reason why I don't I don't have any roots for this orchid let alone anything else so um I think I need to they really need the hydrogen peroxide I think I, if I say it at enough many times I might actually remember what, how to say it but yeah anyway I need to get my tweezers and here we go I'm taking off all these um, dried seeds because that's the one which is I could actually cut this spike next because I'm not needing it it's just draining energy from this plant so I could just put it into my pot full of spikes because I have a water bottle a uh, water well not the bottle but it's like a just keeping them somewhere and seeing uh, looking uh, and checking if I may actually see if they could actually open up standing in the water not sure Gosh, they just they they have had a field day I think that's the correct term honestly the I'm sure sure I'm sure that even the ancient Romans hadn't had this sort of bacchanal or something which this bastard had. Whoops, what's there? Hopefully I didn't damage that. Uh, the, I think there is a, an eye. I might have damaged the, that. That's something which I do every now and then. It's just, we live and learn. I sometimes damage these... Um, eyes which are popping out and I'm, I'm trying to be careful but sometimes it just happens so that it's not underneath here underneath the, the leaf joint so it's it's not covering it so basically that's a an, an eye I guess so I have to go really careful next to it you see there's no roots and this is actually just fell off from this other <sighs> snails are the worst luckily I didn't pay for this one and that was actually my own fault to be honest I should have just reported it right away and don't don't let these snails to get too far because this suitable it was really plump and nice looking before and uh, let me get back to you and I'm going to take this off from the pot okay so I took off this from its pot it had like root system had and there was some bark underneath it, it it's quite firm so nothing bad Um, it's uh, smelling a bit funny, uh, but it's not like the worst stink that there is, so it's not yet going bad. So the media is quite okay, ish, <laughs> ish is a good uh, addition to any <laughs> anything I say about orchids. <laughs> That's handy. Yeah. Well, anyway. Um, trying to take off all this media from the roots try not to disturb disturb them too much but of course they are going to be disturbed there is no other way and the problem is if there isn't any new suitables which is uh, with oncidiums they mostly do new 
roots from new pseudopods. If you are lucky and you get them to activate, they might actually branch out just like this. And I'm hoping for that. At least I have these three small bulbs. Uh, that big one, it has these new bulbs uh, emerging, so I might be able to actually get it to revive. But these both, after I have cleaned this thoroughly and get rid of all this media, now I actually have to start using my uh, tweezers. These are my old tweezers, which didn't have any other uh, reason to... Mm, I didn't use this for anything else, so I just confiscated that for, for the orchids. So the reason why I'm using tweezers is because sometimes these uh, orchids might have, or the Oncidium types, they might have something new starting from this, like uh, underneath here. So it, instead of like damaging that, I try to get it get this off really like pull off all the media and that way I might actually have the chance to revive the orchid but I have to see how this goes but yeah it's it's nothing like okay it was uh, attached there so this is nothing that special. I'm just going to continue trying to tease off all this moss which it has here. So let's see how this does. I'm sure I'm not going to get any any. Uh, sorry, I was listening. My son got a friend coming over. So, but anyway. Um. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to pause this for a while and continue with this and then I'll show you what I got here. Okay, I'm back. So, um, the root seems to be quite firm. Well, some a bit more mushier than others. I think this one is not live but it's not i'm not able to actually pull the velamen so i'm not going to start taking off any of this roots i'm anyway probably going to report it quite soon like um when i can see for a new acetable coming up because i might actually put this a bit more moist uh retentive i think that's the word well it's keeping more moist inside of that um media I don't see any new like pseudobulbs or eyes or anything popping out, so I'm not sure how this is going to be uh, going to fare. But it's the one which has the roots because this one doesn't have those. So I'm going to fill it this like drench this with the hydrogen peroxide and that one too and i'm going to find pots and all this um i'm going to uh, leave them soaking with the hydrogen peroxide and clean this off and come back to take the plant number two off from its um old media and let's see what we can actually see sorry you weren't folks but i'll be back so then, I'm back, and this is plant number two, which uh, is my Dendrobium spectabile, crossed with the ma ma Macrophyllum. I think it was really interesting cross, which I actually mentioned before. Now, I'll take a look what's inside the pot. I think it was Miss Orchid Girl who had this really funny series of what's in my pot. And she was looking for a lo uh, the um, right um, lottery numbers and Nemo and what else. It was really funny. I would actually add to my... I would like to add like this intro and outro and all this fancy stuff. But because I have this uh, issue... Uh, let me get back to you again. 
Sorry about the. Okay, I'm back. Uh, live. <laughs> Someone was at the door. So anyway, so what do I was saying? Yeah. So I would really love to have this. Oh, the spider. Hello. Who are, who are you? The thing is, I'm not sure if you are uh, welcome here in Finland because you are not native. You are coming from Germany. But anyway back to the matter so uh, the correct thing would be to le left this dendrobium in this media but because i have had this issue with the um, pseudobulbs they have like the new ones they just like had desiccated and they were mushy and everything so i really need to do emergency reporting for this one I have soaked it in a um, seaweed extract again. I usually do with it, all of my new plants there because that's theory goes that it uh, actually activates some sort of things because it's it, it has um, I believe it's a, some hormones which actually activate the growth but because i'm not the scientist and this is something which i've heard from other youtubers so i'll uh, take it with a grain of salt and do a bit of a search for yourself and i lost a tip there oh dear well anyway i should actually check out all this uh, before i do the reporting because the thing is I really don't remember anymore what sort of like um, another tip lost there. I think I need my tweezers now. So I really don't remember what was the growing environment they really prefer. I think this is something similar like the Dendrobium phalaenopsis types. But I need to see recheck again before I decide the composition of my media in order to actually give them the correct amount of um, moisture and of course the dryness because it uh, depends on the plant Miltoniopsis you don't dry them <laughs> it has to be moist but not soggy all the time so anyway um, what was I saying so now I'm going to continue taking off this media and check out why my two little, as you can see there was the other one, it's really mushy. I need to cut off that part too. I think there is some new roots. Uh, are you all focused? Sorry. Not actually sure. Can you actually, actually see? But that thing there, that used to be a bulb, it got all mushy and I had to cut it. I didn't have time to report it, like as I told you before. But yeah, I'll continue doing this thing and be back. Okay, back. So um, I took most of the media off, but because uh, these roots are so brittle and they I da uh, they get damaged quite easily uh, so it, in order to save as much as I can I'm going to actually go to the to the bathroom and give this a shower I'm going to blast off all this as much as I can so I can actually see if there is something still left of this uh, media and hopefully this one is actually uh, uh, deattaching itself because I have noticed that this grabs hold on on a bark really um, firmly. So that way it's um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, once I get my uh, hang off some of those um, editing programs, I'll edit off all this so anyway so i'll need to check this out and uh, wash it and then i'll come back and probably do a bit more cleaning with this one and i'm back i got 
most of the media off and I cannot get this it's it's like uh, Um, I can see that there are some new root tips and this seems to be branching type which is great because that means that it might actually rejuvenate itself uh, without the new suitables. I need to be extra careful but nothing which can actually get mushy here is actually left into the joints because the thing is if there is something which keeps this like this joint uh, joints um, wet it means that it might actually uh, get mushy and it's a bit funny color this one hopefully it's going to be okay but anyway I'll continue with this I'm, I'm sorry I have to actually uh, turn off the camera because I really need to concentrate when I'm going there so that I'm going to be extra careful not to destroy any more roots uh, as I'm already done. This is actually something which uh, normally I understand that in Finland they don't do this sort of things. They just try to get off as much as uh, possible of the media and then they just plug it in as it is. And they don't use hydrogen peroxide or anything similar things. If they do, if they do notice something like a mealybox or anything, they probably just use um, common ha house pest uh, sprayers or that sort of, which you actually get in Finland. It's called Ride. I think uh, most of the um, uh, most of the Finnish people actually know that. Uh, but anyway, it's um, as I'm not. I don't like to use anything which is uh, so-called uh, harmful chemicals because everything is chemistry uh, norm uh, even we are up made out of some sort of like chemist chemical stuff <laughs> people I'm not going to go into chemistry okay don't worry not my subject <laughs> or my cup of tea so back to the subject so basically i don't use any uh, ke uh harmful chemicals in my backyard where my orchids are during the summertime i'm prefer uh, uh, preferring the uh um there is this sort of uh, like um uh insects uh such as uh, ladybugs and uh frogs and all this sort of um well, different things which are actually eating these like uh, aphids and stuff. So I'm using that. And then I highly recommend to check out, which I already mentioned, Miss Orchid Girl's uh, page. Because she has some really nice uh, cocktails to actually destroy um, mealybugs. And for example, red spider mite. I don't know these names in Finnish because I I have studied all this in English, which is funny even though I'm Finnish speaking. But honestly, for the bugs, don't know. You you just have to Google the names and then try to figure out which one I'm talking about. Okay, I think I'm all kind of like ready. And I might have actually destroyed an eye in there. Just a second, if I'm able to actually show it to you. Okay, now you can might actually see it. Ah, sorry, I just uh, moved my laptop. So uh, just be careful when you are actually doing the tweezer thing. That's why I wanted to concentrate. Uh, there is an eye on that old spike, which you can might actually see if I yeah there. Um, this one has one too. Sorry, there. This is the one I cut, cut off. So I might be lucky, 
can't actually get this to sorry I, I might have uh, lifted a bit too high to actually grow new new um, canes I'm not it's it's healthy looking plants in other ways and because it's able to actually branch out it's really okay uh, I go and use the hydrogen peroxide on this one too it's three percent and you can actually get it in in pharmacist uh, so it's a disinfection um, every time I say disinfectant I, I, I almost say middle uh, um, disinfection middle so <laughs> it's a desipuimis aine in Finnish too so basically it's a um, hydroperoxide kolme prosenttinen so if you are going to the pharmacist you just ask that one if you cannot find the three percent just ask for the six and usually i buy that 200 millimeter milliliters uh bottle because it's i usually use it quite uh, a lot and that's actually killing the snails and the snail eggs which are usually coming back if if the snails you are uh, removing the snails and you leave the eggs they just come back at some point and a munch of all these nice little roots i don't see any um any like uh, there is some sort of like okay you can you, you can see that there's has been some munching there but on the other hand if you look at these other root tips they aren't munch out so it might have been that there has been some snails at some point of this um, orchid's life anyway because i have taken it off from its um, growing media i'm going to disinfect it or kill the bugs or anything else and i know that normally uh, i have a car garden too i have a um, house plants and all uh in it's really important to have this um this uh, ecosystem in inside of the pot but because i have so much um like um different kind of like uh, they, they're using these mites which are like um uh, mites which which are hunting hunting other bugs which are uh, which are actually bad for your for your plants don't find the words now sorry but anyway i have that sort of predatory mites that's the word so i have those in my house it sounds really weird i have those and then i have also uh spiders which are quite okay uh, to my knowledge so I'm not afraid of having something like that inside of my house. It's not, they are not bothering me. They are staying where they are. They are not like cobwebbing everything. They are like slightly somewhere on a corner or something like that. I rather have them than to have uh, this huge pile of these um, pests, which are actually eating my plants. So you choose <laughs> and i don't like to use this sort of like harmful chemicals inside of my house that's the other reason if i someday might have some sort of outbreak of uh, mealy box or anything like that i might um, go with the uh, uh, those heavier chemicals but because now currently i don't ha seem to have that sort of problem um, knocking on the wood which is my head I hope I'm going not going to see them anytime soon. But let's see, let's continue with this one. Okay, I'm back. I just put some disinfection liquid on my gloves and waiting them to actually dry off. Anyway, I'm disinfecting the plants as well in the in sort of way, so I'm just like I'm going to use these same ones because it's not good to actually have like to actually destroy this planet by re uh, using these like gloves or anything like that and just throw them away right away so I'm trying to at least when I'm doing reporting I'm using the same while i'm taking off the plants and um, this is interesting 
yeah most of the time you end up having this sort of thing so i'm not sure if this is actually i'm able to actually save this or anything like that because the new thing which you can actually see there it's it looks really sad i think it was underneath the moss let's see i have the vivarium which is like i can put the plants in there so this is the twinkle i know it's in bloom and i know it doesn't have new bulbs pseudobulbs but the problem is i don't like the media and as you can see it's not looking that good i gave gave it a bath to get this thing going but anyway it's like the pseudobulbs are not looking that good either and if you can see it's aborting some spikes so to me that says like i don't i don't want to flower now i have a problem so flowers i'm i'm okay to actually cut the flowers off because that's actually because i i want to enjoy this plant next five years at least maybe 10. so if if i'm not cutting the spikes off now i might not see any other blooms there because that this is the one which is making it to bloom if it's happy I can get to see another blooming um, flower so instead of like uh, keeping this uh, pushing all the energy into the flowers which are actually mostly aborting I'm just going to continue uh, repotting this and cut off the spikes and let it actually relax and have a have its um, time to actually uh, rejuvenate just a moment just came back to show you this so this is why i wanted to actually report this if you can see that's like really it smells like death to be honest i don't feel so good so anyway i'm going to continue to, uh, with the tweezers and try to clear all this off i'm sorry i i have to stop for a while so that you cannot actually see what i'm doing but anyway the idea is to just try to tease off as much as i can i'll take from the end and just pull so that way i might actually get only the moss and not the the actual roots but anyway i'll stop for a while and i'll get back to you if there is something new to be shown so the reason why i think this plant wasn't doing that good i'm not sure if you can actually see it but this is really dark and compared to what it had on its root system uh, down below so basically this media is way too acidic so all these root tips has been had burned so it does have some roots here but most of them which this has tried to actually branch uh, or to push out they have like stopped there because it's uh, full of mold and old uh, seeds uh, lehtia, basically i know that some Finnish people are looking at this so i'm saying the Finnish words as well uh but anyway this this leaves which has dried off and died off and as it has been really moist they have stayed on and become a moldy one so best way to destroy your orchid is to leave all this thing inside of there so i'm going to go and shower this off and then i'm going to take a look where I, i'm continuing and that's not looking so good so i have to actually take a look do i have to there is that sort of thing which looks like it's somebody some one or something has actually eaten this uh, suit bulb so i have to go and wash this and then disinfect it and with hydrogen peroxide i'm getting better at saying that <laughs> but anyway i'll cut off the spikes yeah i know it's hard to see but i i have to do it i have to do it even though twinkle spikes it takes forever for them to actually uh, 
do this but this is beneficial for the plant mm. I'm, I'm trying to make it like uh, rebounds and get it vitality back and get it on back again to actually enjoy the blooms in soon future hopefully although the spikes and the flowers on twinkle it's famous for being really slow sorry i'm just taking off the seeds which are moldy inside of there don't ever get, uh, let your plant look like that wait try to see if you are focused you're focused now yeah um okay sorry uh the laptop is actually in front of it yeah i have to get all rid of all that black thing there it's just a second okay back so i blasted off most of it uh i need to disinfect it that part at at least um Oh, and to come back to this taking off all this uh, leaf litter and stuff uh, away from the plant. The thing is, I know some people say that in nature is nothing like that happens, but we are not in nature. We are actually inside of a house where I don't get like this optimal. Just a second. Okay, so uh, we are not living in the nature at this point. Uh, this is actually inside of a house. I don't have the optimal location for the for the plant. Sorry again, <laughs> I'm, I'm interrupted, but that's life. So uh, we are not in an optimal location for the twinkles. And actually, twinkles is like a hybrid, which is not like living in nature at as well. You cannot. I believe at this point, don't know if somebody, some scientist has have found twinkles uh, somewhere as you can see there is coming a new pseudobulb new pseudobulb new pseudobulb yay so i might actually have a look with this one as you can see three new so um to be able to actually give this like a good start i need to fix this problem with the and anyway, orchids in nature, they are, even though they are getting the litter on them, the species, they have this like optimal location. They have adapted to live in that uh, climate. There is the breeze if they need one. There is like some ani uh, some animals and, and bugs and all might be living there to uh, taking care of all this litter. Uh, the water might like uh, refresh it every now and then so that they won't get like uh, uh, this block in here which we get when we are actually working with hold on yeah so basically it's it's not ideal for the plants to actually live in our homes so that's why we have to think about how we can actually provide the best kind of uh, care for these and this is quite common when you are having having um, orchids I they tend to have oh look it's variegated there the leaf look cute but anyway I'll continue with this one I really have to concentrate there because I, I, I don't want to damage any more roots so I'll be back back so I took off this little bulb which was seedling bulb there i don't want to take this off even though I, it would be easier with this thing here that it, it seems to fit be firm and i think it's like um it's not open wound so if i just clean it off hopefully it's going to continue like that so um i'll just try to clean all the between all this as much as i can i'll uh blush it again and then i'm going to use hydrogen gen peroxide which is actually also acting it's it's um killing all the fungus and stuff from there too 
I do get sometimes some sort of fungus if uh, my plant doesn't have that good uh, um, root system. But that's actually mendable. If I see this uh, fungus thing or the like this um, on on the media in my pot, I just usually put it close to the fan which I have uh, rotating inside of uh, my room. It's not now. Uh, it's not now on that's why because i'm doing this video but normally i have this uh, fan blowing so basically i'm going to make it to this keep this uh, around this table so it gets really good fan uh, blow, uh the black fan is blowing on it so if i would take this off this bulb this small one here it's attaching this one and this one so i don't want to do that because this small thing is here and it ha has that new growth there if I can, if I'm able to oh, sorry I'm not able to actually see it myself but it has two new growths it's a bit wobbly but I'm trying not to disturb it too much but yeah let's see how this does okay I think I'm almost ready I'll go and blast, blast this with water and I'll go into disinfect it uh, after it has dried out of, of a bit so that the hydrogen peroxide won't get milder if, if there is water here. It's actually, according to some, it's actually um, making it mild. So it's not that heavily concentrated or heavily and heavily 3% is not that much but anyway um, I've seen people actually spraying their orchids with the 3% without any problems even though the plant has been wet so go and figure find your own way I don't suggest that I know the best way so just find what suits your you the best and we're back that I just cannot remove anyway um, I might want, want to put in the inside of there if I can actually see anything there is the hole so I was thinking I would put some cinnamon in there cinnamon is um, it's it's drying off all this This seems to be otherwise okay, but I'll I'll put some cinnamon in this sort of um, open the ones which were open ones. Uh, so this is the now I'm actually handling. I have to let me see. I have to check. Yeah, this was the Dendrobium spectabile crossed with macrophyllum, and I guess I might have some years to actually wait until this might actually bloom because. Uh, 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 Spectacular needs loads of years to actually mature its pseudobulbs. It need, needs like, was it like five or seven to be able to bloom? And these really needs like a uh, warm to hot. Uh, uh, Spectacular also likes to have than the kind of light. Macrophyllum, uh, it's not that much, but I'll just trial and error. Let's see what my orchid says. And I have these pots here. I chose them ready for my plants and I disinfect and wash them really thoroughly. You can use normal normal tea detergent. Horrible word, tongue, tongue, tongue twisters again. However, you can, I would like to actually use with my pots and all this concerning plants i use uh mandusuopa which is sort of like it's it's a pine needle soap and it's you can find it in finland from grocery stores and that seems to be doing quite good i like to use that it's uh it's it actually kills bugs too so i use it to if it's outside on my roses if i get some sort of problems i put uh pine needle soap and then mix it with something like um uh tree three uh tree tree tea tree oil that's the one <sighs> oh, gosh horrible words cannot 
pronounce them. Anyway, um, all of this is like basic bark. You just put, I just put this size of bark. I think the finish one, which you can find Biolan, for example, is quite good. You just mix that. I tend to order like 40 liters abroad because I have like uh, 50 orchids. So that's why I go with those. If Biolan starts to make these huge sa uh, like sacks, I'll buy it. But it's like, I just bought, a, a, while I'm not buying orchids or anything during the winter time, I just buy a really huge chunk of uh, bark. And since I don't have a perlite, I'm using the smaller uh, grain of bark. It's Orchiata, I think it's it's a precision uh, size. The other one is Super. So the Super is something which I use for Oncidium uh, and that sort of um, orchids normally. And then I have this uh, New Zealand Sphagnum Moss. I had a Zillian, uh, uh, Chilean Sphagnum. Uh, but unfortunately, I might have had a bad batch or something, but it I just it destroyed half of my oncidiums. So I uh, it might be that I sh should have had uh, repotted them earlier, but the problem was that they weren't growing. So it might be me also. But anyway, because I I could find this New Zealand Spectrum Moss, and everybody is saying that it's really good stuff so I'm going to use it so now I'm going to uh, use this mix which I have here for this sort of or orchid roots uh, I have that one orchid which doesn't have any roots so I'm going to use a bit more sphagnum I might actually put it in vivariums and then I'm going to just I disinfected this uh, this spike even though it has this um, dirt you can see it has been in the in the uh, media so I'm going to reuse it I just disinfected it and I'm going to hold uh, my what was it sweet sugar on sodium sweet sugar yes so anyway uh, back to the sack this is for the sweet sugar because it doesn't have roots I don't want uh, but I want to have something where it can actually put its roots this was a bit big for this one I guess um, I think this one was... Oh, you decided to attach yourself already there. Yeah, I think it was like this. Like this one goes here. And this one goes here. And this one has this one. Perfect. Okay. Let's continue. Some actually like like to use uh, twist this a bit so I can get it a little bit lower. So, oh yeah, almost forgot. Just a second. Cinnamon. We need ground cinnamon. Okay. So I'm using ground cinnamon. Connelly. It's actually good to seal off wounds on uh, spikes or anything like similar kind of. So I just, sorry if you didn't see anything, I just tap it on there, try to avoid the roots or any like other parts. I didn't think I need to fix that. Try to not do what I do, try to do what I say, tell you to do. So basically you just try to put it in places where there is open wound. Hold on, this is just, I'm just, I just bought, bought this for this purpose. I have a separate cinnamon on, in my, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm going now off from the camera. There. So now I've used the cinnamon on there. Oh, sir. Yeah. I need to clean off a bit of these roots because it's it. Uh, I managed to actually spread it all over. Don't do that. Just a second. Okay. 
Yeah, it's running. Yep. Okay, I managed to get most of it off. <laughs> it's learning. You just learn while you do. And this is like the situation with this orchid. So I, where was I? Oh yeah, I was trying to make it to be a bit deeper in the pot. And throw it out. Why don't you? I think I need more some, some more bark. It's always surprising how much you actually need the bark. These pots they actually eat it a lot. Lot of it. There is this a uh, bit finer media. So I'm just putting that inside of it so it uh, stays a bit more moist. It's going to go underneath there. I think I want to have some sort of like, um, yeah, bigger chunks of media there. So this one won't stay long too wet. Yeah. Because I don't want uh, that suitable and that one either. To actually stand in water for a long time. This has funny tendency to grow this funny way and this odd angle. So I need to have like this sort of like uh, bigger bark on that places. So basically, as you can see, so it's it's a bit lower there. Wait, can you actually see? Hopefully you can actually see something, because I have troubles of looking. Okay, there. Now you can see. Sorry about that. It has troubles of actually focusing. Hmm. So it's, it's a bit underneath the oops, uh, media. And I know, for example, Miss Orchid Girl would never push the bark like this. She doesn't like that sort of way. I have noticed that my orchids done does better when I have this like I have pushed them hard underneath the soil. So I'll I I use that. But do whatever you feel that it's it's working for you. If you feel like you want to be as gentle as possible, just do that. But for me it's I used to be like really gentle and um, it might be that it's just it's it's not actually the cause and effect so it there is no causalit causalit causality in finnish so basically uh like every time you sneeze something happens so it doesn't automatically mean that because of you you're sneezing that thing happens so anyway causality i think i'm not sure the english word anyway i'm blabbing so that's uh the uh, orchid okay, number one and we have spectabile macrophyllum there it is go and check out these blooms look wild I'm really waiting it to perhaps where when um after ten years I get to see the blooms. I don't care. I like the way it's growing. Anytime I buy orchids, I always buy them in that way that I don't mind if they don't flower at all. So that I can actually enjoy them even though something happens. I tend to actually give them water after I have um uh, almost right after I have repotted them. So now I'm going to put this aside and continue. I need to, I think I need some more bark unless I take this one now. But that would need like more of the, yeah. Okay, first thing first, I'm going to change this water and get more uh, sphagnum moss. I'll be right back. And I'm back. 
I need to, I, I cleaned this uh, stick to snake too. I need to actually cut it at some point. But I need the heavier, heavy duty machines for that. I'm going to actually support my, let that sink in there. Oh. Throw it off, why don't you? I'm really good at this. Oh yeah, I'm out of the power. Hold on a sec. I'll take this with me and I go to the other room because there's the the um, sack is huge. Okay, and I'm back. Sorry about that bouncing up and down. I'll try to learn to use the editor and to be able to actually and watch out when you're squeezing this moss the extra excess water of it there might be this really um, like thorns in it don't remember what it was but some have got one in underneath their skin so even though something like this yeah so be careful just whatever I don't remember. This might have been. I think that was part of the uh, sweet sugar. <laughs> don't remember what I have here. <laughs> oh dear! I can always look at back then. Um, video. Maybe I should use some scissors for that matter. Okay. So basically I continue with all of these like this. I'm going to show you how I'm doing the, the other switch girl. Um, I'll show them uh, the rest later. Okay. Okay. I'm back. I'm now putting this Oncidium uh, switch grow without the roots inside of this pot. I use this precision, which is really small bark, small graded. And then I have some sphagnum moss inside there too. To, and really at the bottom, I have this uh, power grade. And since it doesn't have any roots, I'm trying to stake this. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to use this wire to actually uh, keep it in place. Hopefully you can actually see what I'm doing here. So anyway, I'm using this oldest bolt to actually attach it. And I'm not sure if it's going to be working at all. I think I actually need to do like a cross. Open up the. And what I use to cut the uh, cut the canes, I usually use these whiskers. Uh, which are for the to cut the branches of a tree <gasps> and I have the scissors to actually open up the sides of this sorry if you didn't see actually anything okay so now I let it sit like that measure somehow how far I need to go and then I'm going to push this through so I have the stake and this one to actually hold it in place that way it has the something something to anchor it on the bottom of the pot 
um, it might actually grow roots to attach itself. I'm hoping that I'm going to put this into the vivarium to have the extra humidity and that way to secure the plant. It doesn't look pretty but it's it's not like I'm competing in the flower show or something with this arrangement. So I'm trying to push this as far as I can underneath the bulbs so they are not touching the bulbs, it's touching the bottom which is actually making the bulb to where's the where the roots usually come and I can see inside there you can actually see it's bulging so there should come a new suitable this is a bit too small pot for this size uh, the size of the plant uh, but that's not relevant at this point I'm trying to get it through to clean these holes so it would actually yeah now it's so now it's like secured in two different ways so it might actually be able to do the root system what it needs but anyway this is going into my old aquarium which is now and uh, now you can actually see how i've attached it so there it is and there's the stake uh, coming out of the one of the holes to keep it in place. It's still a bit wobbly but I'm really hoping it's going to survive with this. I think I need to put some cinnamon on there. Just a second. And um, here's the... I'll show this to you and then I'm putting the cinnamon. Oh, I made a mess. <laughs> okay. Now then. I'm going to clean this off later uh, but this is the twin, tiny twinkle in its pot I might uh, arrange it a little bit uh, after I have watered it to see that it's not like it doesn't sink into the um, media and cause it to rot because the pseudopods are not shouldn't be inside of the media they should be above the media so that's that's why for example this thing here thing here if it starts to seep moist i might actually put something like a styrofoam or something else underneath it to keep it from leaning against the media if it stays wet because that's the way to actually rot the pseudobulbs and this this needs to be quite deep in a way because if you can see there, um, these newest pseudobulbs, they are, they are so much higher than the seedling pseudobulbs. And then there's this, because I, I, I don't remember which this one is, I'm using the tag with this. Uh, I'm going to make another one for that other one. Oh, I was poetic. <laughs> so, um, so this is the... Don't know if it has any available eyes underneath there but yeah that's all four of them now i have again a few extra <laughs> plants so anyway thanks for watching and i'm going to clean this mess up and sorry about the length but this is something like just watch it and then pause it and then watch it again i sometimes do that myself Anyway, I'll get back to you with something else to um, maybe tomorrow um, I'm going to record video for the weekend. I think I might be able to actually get like decent intros and outros uh, by then during the Christmas time when I have an ho holidays and all and I actually have like eight hours to <laughs> look into the um, how to use this editing software just takes so much time. So, have a great day.